Hey folks, welcome back. Now we're getting into some really advanced changes and updates to the nav bar. We're going to talk about the background color or the background image used for the nav bar as well as its positioning. So let's just take a look at our demo page for a sec first. Here we go. Up here is the nav bar. As you can see, we have this nice striped background. Um, now it may we may be using a background image or or a CSS color depending on the template so things will change depending on the particular aesthetic of the design that we're trying to achieve uh, in this particular one a stripe you can't really get with CSS so we're using a background image okay so we'll show you how to change that to another image or to a solid color using CSS we'll also change you how to change show you how to change the positioning and when I talk about the positioning I'm talking about the fixed positioning because right now it's affixed to the top of the browser window personally I think this is a great way to work with navigation in a website now and you'll see this more and more and more in websites that are being developed because it makes it so easy for your visitor to find other pages in the site without having to scroll up and down which means you have a better chance of retaining them or keeping them on your site and going to different pages. The last thing you want to do is have a page that's full of great content but somebody just gets a little bit uh, confused or lost and they don't know how to get to the other pages in your site and instead of scrolling up and down yeah well they just leave and go somewhere else. So let's get into our back in a dream over here and let's talk about the background. Let's get into our site our styles and our styles.css style sheet. And we don't have to go down too far. And right here we find the nav bar inner. This is a typical bootstrap navigation bar. All we've done is we've just put it into the styles.css to make it a little easier to manage the, uh, the look and the feel of it. And what you'll often see here is the background and there'll be a URL followed by menu top background PNG. So really all you need to do is create your own menu top background PNG image minimally 40 pixels in height um, the easiest thing or the best thing you can actually do if you do see the menu top background is go and open up the uh, go open up this menu top png file in your graphic editor and see how big it is if you're not sure how big it is here's a little cheat method that i do is i create a brand new page like so put it in design view i just drag that menu top background onto the page like so there it is there and in the code view you can sort of see that it is a height of 43 pixels. Okay, so that's a little bit of a cheat on how to discover the size of an image. There's a bazillion ways to figure it out though. So I'm just showing you one quick and easy wet method. So I would say if you're gonna replace this, make a re your replacement image the same size, 1680 by 43, and it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. If it's just a solid color, I'd probably go with CSS myself, but maybe you wanna use some sort of a gradient. Try and stick with the original if you can. Okay, you create your replacement image, you pop it into the graphics folder to overwrite the existing PNG, and that's really the, the best way to replace it, or just type in the name of your replacement image and the path to that, that image right here. That's how you change the graphic. Now, if you want to change the color and use CSS instead, a solid color, that's a piece of cake. Let me show you how to do that. You grab, see where it says URL? If you have a URL, you grab that, Scooch all the way over to that semicolon, but don't delete it. Hit the backspace once, twice, three times until your cursor is nudged up against the D in the word background. At that point in time, you can hit the shift and colon key. So shift and colon, and that's going to activate the color picker. So you see the color wheel here? Just double click on that. Then you can go through and select a color that you think is going to work best. Let's get something really bright here. Let's go with bright purple. Perfect. So now we have a color for the background instead of an image. We simply save. We go back to our page that's open in our editor. And with a quick refresh, we can see that purple, that's the color of our bar that we're using up here now. Okay. Okay, so let's pop back in here. There's a few other things you can play around with to sort of see what's going to work best for you. But really that's the, the, the nuts and bolts of changing the background for the nav bar. Now the other thing is the position of it. If you really want it to be uh, affixed to the page and not to the top of the browser window, in other words if you want that, that bar here to scroll with your page so it's not always affixed to the top, you can change it. However, it's a little bit different because it's not really um, 
applied via a style that you would find in the styles.css is actually buried in the bootstrap uh, styles. And instead of going into a style sheet that contains about 5,000 lines of code, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to uh, remove that particular uh, positioning element. Let's just open up one of our existing pages here and we're going to pop it into code view. You see where it says div class, we're going to scroll down and you see where it says div class of navbar? We've got navbar, navbar fixed top. This is the uh, class that basically tells it or anchors it to the top of the page. Really what we want to do is we need to remove that class from this particular div container and we can do that through the entire site just by using the find and replace. I mean you can actually open up the DWT if your your template has a DWT but I'm going to suggest I'm going to show you how to use the find and replace tool uh, because this is that's just my preferred method. It's I'm, I'm old school I've been doing this since uh, before the we had you know number 2000 in our our century but it's also a really good tool to use if you haven't used it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this div class navbar navbar fix top including the two brackets on either side. We're going to select it. We're going to go to the edit find and replace or control plus F. There we go. And what we're looking for is we're going to basically copy this class down into the replace with and we're just going to remove the navbar fix top just like so making sure that the word navbar is still wrapped in the double quotes. Cool. We're going to change the find in location. We're going to make sure it's set to the entire current local site and source code. Then all we have to do is hit replace all. Now you're going to get this message here. You cannot undo this. Not a problem. If we needed to undo it, we could simply reapply the tag if we wanted to using the same find and replace. So we'll hit yes. And it's going to tell us all the pages that it's going through and all the updates that it's making. There we go. 57 items found in 56 pages because the photo slideshow does not use that particular element. We can close that down. Now you'll notice here that the index page here, which was open, didn't get updated. This is sort of a, one of the things I've noticed in Dreamy or maybe a little bit of a, a flaw. It's actually the page that's actually opened. Uh, it doesn't necessarily get updated. I'm not sure why. So what we do is we just close it down and then we just do it again. So find and replace that with that. Replace all. Yep, it's probably going to find one page. Yep, it did. The index page. Cool. Now we're good. And that's all you have to do to uh, change the fixed navbar to a navbar that floats or flows with a page. So just jumping back, here's a good example right here. See? Now the navbar is affixed to the top and it goes where the page goes.